the number one show that dominates cable news, The O'Reilly Factor. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly in the Unresolved Problem segment tonight. Crimes aboard luxury cruise ships. Here's a stunning stat. Over a four-year period, there have been close to 200 allegations of sexual crimes aboard Royal Caribbean International cruise ships. According to depositions taken in some of those cases, not one of those has been prosecuted in criminal court. Now there's another disturbing situation on that cruise line. 26-year-old George Smith was honeymooning with his wife, Jennifer Hagel, on the Royal Caribbean ship Brilliance of the Sea. Somewhere off the coast of Turkey, Smith disappeared, although blood was found near his cabin. The FBI is apparently involved, as are the Turkish authorities, but the case is still a mystery. Joining us now from Denver is Charles Lipcon, an attorney who's involved with some cruise ship litigation. Here in the studio, Tim Green, the host of Fox's A Current Affair program, which is investigating the disappearance of George Smith, who's from Connecticut. All right, what do, what do you think happened to Smith? Well, I think you have to consider one thing. It, it may be an accident. That's probably unlikely that he somehow cut himself, was bleeding, and then got himself over. But we know that both he and his wife, Jennifer, were extremely drunk that night. We've had de several witnesses saying they were actually you know, almost falling down drunk. So that's a possibility, right? It could be an accident. But it seems more likely that he is the victim of foul play, that someone either cut, stabbed, beat him inside the cabin because we've had reports that there was blood inside the cabin, and then somehow he got out to the, to the railing and then went over, and you see that blood stain right there. That was on the awning below his cabin. And I would think that it's more likely than not that it wasn't just one guy that, that sent him over because he was a good sized guy. The railing's about four feet high. So while it's possible he was so intoxicated that he did this to himself and he laid there bleeding until he, you know, just fell off, it's more likely that, uh, that he was attacked and, and helped overboard. Okay. Now, was your balcony off his room? There was, a, there was a, a walkway with a railing and then the awning was below that. That's okay. where that so he was. Out of, was. Somebody had to get him out of his room bring him out to a little walkway and toss him if that had occurred. Yeah, that's right. Now, by the way, uh, I mean, we, ha we interviewed uh, the passenger who was in the cabin next to his uh, last night on the show, who is a deputy uh, chief of police out in California. The FBI had yet to interview this guy. This is the guy in the cabin next door who said, to, who told us there were all kinds of noises. You know, first there was cheering and celebrating. He thought there was a drinking game going on. At one point he heard, heard numerous men's voices. At one point he heard a woman's voice. And then he heard the thud that's been reported by a lot of the passengers, which seems like it was his body going over and hitting that on it. Yeah, and there was also a handprint, a bloody handprint on the side of the ship. Now, one of the problems the FBI has is that this thing happens in international waters. It might have happened, you know, it's Kusadasi, Turkey. I've been there. I mean, you know, the FBI has flown into a situation where the crime scene's contaminated. The cruise ship's not real anxious to tell anybody what happened. Bad publicity. You know, you know the game. Absolutely, but why are we getting to the guy who was in the cabin next know. to this guy before the FBI? And Did then you ask he, the FBI? Then? And then he got a call. The FBI will just, they won't tell us anything. It's no comment. They don't want to help us. They were, they were upset because we, uh, you know, I spoke to the father and, and said, you know, this is not a high priority thing. Charles Lipcon, who you're going to talk to in a minute, uh, you know, we talked to him a couple weeks ago. And when I heard the statistics that you talked about, you know, I repeated this to the father and said, look, you know, all these crimes have occurred on these cruise ships and without, with zero prosecutions. You need to keep this thing alive in the media. You need people talking about this, right. getting the it's, FBI It's a going. lot like the Natalie Holloway case, if it's a guy. Um, all right, Mr. Lipgon, how do you see this thing here? Um, you know, the cruise ship didn't want to come on, Caribbean Cruise Lines, but they issued a statement saying that incidents such as Mrs. Smith's disappearance are extremely rare. Uh, we have more than 3.5 million guests uh, still safely on Royal Caribbean, and uh, we have security that's good and, and surveillance and all of that stuff. What say you? Well, I, di I disagree with most of that. I, I think from what, I, what I've seen over 30 years of handling cases against the cruise lines, many of them involving crimes and sexual assaults, that, uh, that it's really shocking. Uh, I've been told in deposition that uh, they have as many as two sexual assaults reported uh, per ship per month. And I just think that's way too high. Well, they could do things to, uh, to cut it down, but they don't. Well, how could you do things to cut it down? There's a drink fest on all of these places. Oh, you know, you're, you're so getting cool. people loaded. They're running around. Uh, they're in close proximity. There's thousands of them on the boat. 
Um, you got crews from everywhere all around the world, largely unsupervised. I mean, it's just a cauldron, isn't it? Yes, it is. But I, I would start with cameras in the hallway. They have cameras in a lot of public areas to protect themselves. But to protect the passengers, they should put some cameras in, the, in those hallways. And, and then they'll see exactly what's going on. If they see three or four guys breaking into a door. Sure, if they had cameras uh, in the hallways, they, they, they would. Then they could. They, can, they, they would have known who was, this guy, who was in this guy's room. Now it's. Exactly. Uh, peepholes, uh, door chains, uh, preventing uh, roofies from being slipped into uh, the drinks of women. I don't know how which, you can do that, sir. I don't know how you can do that in, in an environment. But one more very important question. It has been alleged that not only this cruise ship line, but others sanitize all crime scenes as soon as the crimes happen so they won't be held liable. There will be no proof. Do you believe that? Yes, I, I, I do believe that. I, I think one of the interesting things about uh, sexual assaults and crimes is that they are not handled by the security department, but rather it goes to the risk management department. And they're charged with protecting the purse of the cruise line. Yeah, it should I, really be going to the head of security. There should be law enforcement on all of these cruise ships. That should happen. Now, one more question for you, Tim. Uh, what about the wife? Have you talked to the wife? Has we she haven't. stepped over? No. Wait, wait, we, what's what's we her have, deal? She is, she is uh, you know, completely disappeared. You know, we had one of our producers spoke to the spoke to uh, one of the family members, and they just said, "Look, we're not talking." Obviously, she is uh, grieving right now and, and wants her privacy. And you know, we would love we would love Ooh, to. You would talk think to that her. she'd want to know who killed the husband if that's the case. You know, you know, she could drive the story. That's what she, I'm talking about. She could. Um, there's there's a possibility that she may not remember what happened. I mean, because she was drinking. We've had, as I said, we've had several witnesses say that she was, you know, very intoxicated, yeah. leaning up against them when she left the, the um, disco, banging around, stumbling, fall All down right. drunk. All right, Tim, thank you, Counselor. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll stay on the story. On deck. Pardon the